So you wanna get an e-bike. Based on my research, that probably means you live in a city or you're over the age of 65. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Troxxas Skyhopper 20-inch e-bike. Your shill alarms should definitely be going off right now because Troxxas did send me this bike free of charge, so I wanna say that up front, but they don't have any creative control in the video whatsoever, and they're not gonna see it before it goes up. So here is my, as honest as possible, review of their e-bike. So let's get some of the specs out of the way right off the bat here. This bike have a, has a 750 watt motor, so do all of the Troxxas bikes. They claim a 50 mile range, which we will get into a little bit later. The weight capacity of this bike is 275 pounds. It has four inch fat tires in the front and in the back. It has a seven speed shifter, which we definitely have some stuff to say about that. And it can accommodate a rider from five feet to six foot two. And I will say six foot two might be pushing a little bit. I'm 5'10", and the seat can definitely go high enough for someone who's 6'2", but leaning forward down on those handlebars, maybe I don't know how to ride a bike or I don't know how to set it up properly, but that might be an issue as you get a little bit taller. Now this bike is a pedal assist bike. This is my first e-bike. I'd never had one before. I had no idea what to expect. It has five pedal assist levels, one, two, three, four, and five. And as you pedal, the motor will slowly kind of kick in and deliver some amount of power depending on the level that you have it set at. I found that actually really nice. So you kind of start pedaling and then the motor kicks in, makes it a breeze to pedal. And you can go all the way up to 20 miles an hour you could go faster if you're willing to pedal faster, but that is the fastest I could get the, just the motor to get me to go. And I have to say that I really like the way this pedal assist feature works. I imagine it's very similar for most e-bikes that do the pedal assist thing. Um, just kind of fade it in nicely. If you hit the brakes or stop pedaling, then it'll back off that motor and it's really nice and works very well. This thing has a big battery. They claim that it is Samsung brand. I did not actually verify that. It is a 48 volt battery and it's 12.8 amp hours. That's the amount of life that you're gonna get, get out of that thing. The bike is aluminum and it weighs about 65 pounds. The seat clamp has a quick release on it so that you can easily adjust that seat height. And it does have a front suspension as well. I'll get into more of the negatives later. We're gonna start with some of the positive stuff. So they claim a 49 to 60 mile range now that's probably with a really light rider, all level ground and pedaling using just the pedal assist, probably on level one. That's what most other e-bikes on the internet I've seen kind of say. I didn't actually see the specifications from Troxxas on their website, how they claimed that 49 to 60 mile range. I will let you know, when I just slammed the throttle, zero pedaling, and I got to 20 miles an hour, I just let it go to see how far it could get on one charge all throttle, 20 miles an hour, and I got 16 miles. Now, I thought that was pretty good. 16 miles, no pedaling, all throttle at 20 miles an hour. I thought that was pretty impressive. So if you bring the speed down and you're willing to pedal a little bit, you will absolutely get way more range than that. So worst case, absolute worst case scenario I could throw at that thing, I got 16 mile range. A couple reasons that I really like this bike is that it has the rack in the back so you can strap something to it. If you had a bag or whatnot, you don't have to wear it. You could put it on there. And again, the total capacity of the bike, they say is 275 pounds. So keep that in mind. I'm about 170, I think. And so I had a, a decent headroom for, you know, a load that I could put on the back of that bike. In addition to the five pedal assist features, it also has a little speedometer or a little screen that does show the speedometer. And it shows a few other things as well. It has a front headlight, has a back tail light. The tail light is gonna flash really no matter what when you hit the brakes, whether the lights are on or off, the tail light will light up when you hit the brakes. I like that a lot. The headlight, you just hold down the up button and it'll turn the lights on so you'll get a tail light and a headlight. Not the most impressive thing in the world, but I think someone would see you at nighttime, which is probably what it's more so for instead of you actually seeing the ground in front of you, it's just so that other people see you. So that works really well. 
There is also an additional mode that I found out about and it's called walking. It might have a different name. And if you hold down the down arrow button, then the motor will start spinning pretty slowly. So I don't, if, I don't know if that's like, if you had to walk the bike up a ramp or something like that, or someone was walking next to you, but you didn't want to pedal, you could hold that down. As soon as you let it go, it stops. Some things that I will caution you about is that once you pedal, if you have a pedal assist level above zero, then the motor is going to kick in. So keep in mind, one thing that I learned as I was riding is that if I slowed down a lot, like almost to stopping and I wanted to start pedaling again, if I didn't drop that pedal assist number down to like one or two and left it on five, it's gonna accelerate really quickly to that 20 miles an hour. So that was something that I would definitely keep in mind is you need to be cognizant of your pedal assist number because you don't wanna get into a situation, let's say you're going to dismount. Okay, and you accidentally spin the pedals a couple times as you're getting off, that motor is going to kick on. So one of the things I tried to remember to do was either hold the brakes, which will prevent the motor from coming on, or move that pedal assist all the way down to zero, or you could just turn the bike off. But that was, you know, I'm not super experienced in the e-bike space. That was definitely something that I learned. Overall, I think the bike is decent quality and the setup was not overly complicated. There was some assembly, of course, because they have to box these things up and send them to you. I do wish that they had a good user's manual. They don't, they kind of point you to their website and they have a little video that kind of goes through some of the things but I know that's not gonna work for everybody. I'm pretty handy, so it was no problem for me, but I think if you're not super handy, you might struggle a little bit just trying to follow the video. I wish they had a detailed manual that just called everything out for the people out there that are gonna need something like that. This bike retails for $1,299, so it's a $1,300 bike. I don't know a ton about e-bikes. Searching around, there seems to be different classes of e-bikes. That price range looks like it gets you in kind of the standard class of e-bike, and then they have ones that, of course, go all the way up in price. One of the most popular brands, their bikes are priced about $2,000. So this is, depending on which bike you get from Troxxas, six, seven, eight hundred dollars cheaper than, you know, some of your more popular brands. So it is a significant savings and it is a pretty powerful bike. I've got between 70 and 80 miles on this thing. I think that's a lot, but actually looking at some of the reviews on the website, people have 200 and 300 miles and they're claiming they're still getting great performance. I have gotten very good performance so far. The motor is very strong. The battery life has been anything I've ever needed. It handles hills absolutely no problem. But the thing that I can't talk about is the longevity of the battery itself. And that's one of the things that I would worry about most when it comes to these like electric vehicle type things. So your skateboards, one wheels, things like that. Once you get a ton of charging cycles on them, are you losing a lot of battery life? They do claim, like I said earlier, that it is a Samsung battery. So that leads me to believe that it's a high quality battery, but I cannot speak to that in this review. You might wanna to go to their website if you're seriously considering this bike and look through the reviews to see if there's people that actually have negative things to say. I haven't been able to see that, but just keep an eye out for it. Now, I'm not new to bikes, but I am new to the e-bike world and I'm new to this kind of like fat tire design. I will say they're harder to pedal just on their own without the motor. It's a bigger tire, kind of a heavy bike. So if you were thinking, hey, I'll just ride it until the battery dies and then I'll go ahead and pedal it, that's an amazing pro to e-bikes over like your skateboards or your one wheels. One wheel, that battery dies, you're literally going nowhere and you have to carry 30 pounds. Skateboard, you could at least like push the skateboard. And then the e-bike, the beauty of it is it's still a bike, so you can just pedal it. But it is, in this case, a heavier bike. It's really no problem. I had the battery die in a range test about two miles from my house, so I had to pedal it back home. I just dropped the gear and took my time and it was no issue at all. Generally, I think it's a decent product. I will say, I don't think it's the most high quality bike ever and I don't think that's what they're going for. I think this is a very decent product for the money that you're spending to get an e-bike. I also am super interested, like if you really wanted to replace some of the components that we'll get into kind of in some of the cons or if you wanted to move everything over just to a different bike, if that would be possible. You would have to use the hub motor of the back wheel, but that is something that I kind of thought about. It's like, that could be a fun project just to kind of take it apart and do something. So that might be something we do in the future, but 
Let's also, let's talk about some of the things that I didn't love about this bike. And so right off the back, I, I didn't think the shocks were all that great in the front. They definitely will like absorb a blow, but they did not feel like the best. Let's talk about the gearing. So there are seven speeds. And one thing that I quickly found out is that once you get pedal assist three and above, you pretty much cannot pedal with just seven speeds and keep up with the speed that your pedal assist number four and number five want to hit. So four is about 17 miles an hour, five is about 20 miles an hour. Once you get to gear seven and you're pedaling pretty quickly, you're gonna to top out at like 13 to 15 miles an hour. I wish there was more gears that, that you could go, you know, eight, nine, 10, so that you actually could be pedaling and applying some type of force to the bike to really help out. I mean, you'd have to be pedaling so fast, ridiculously fast to be able to keep up with the bike at 17, 18, 19, and 20 miles an hour. So I did see that as a con, but if you don't wanna go that fast, and really very rarely, I think, would you ever really want to go that fast. But if you do, you're really just gonna be probably using the throttle. Let's talk about the throttle. The throttle's very light, and it's on your left-hand side, so the shifter's on the right-hand side. That wasn't a big deal to me at all, but it is very light. So what I ended up doing was kind of jamming my thumb up against the plastic frame, and trying to hold the throttle in place that way. Because if I just had my thumb on the throttle, trying to hold it in place, it didn't hold very well and it could easily be pushed in further or, or it, it just wasn't great. Now, I will say, I don't think it's designed for people to just rely strictly on the throttle. I did a lot just for my testing, but if you are gonna use the throttle, I you know just cheat a little bit, put your thumb up on the frame to kind of hold it in place. Also the throttle, I think this is a pro, but the throttle is not super responsive. It's just like the pedaling. So if you push the throttle down, it's not gonna immediately give you feedback. I like that because if you were walking next to the bike or something like that and you accidentally just tap the throttle, it's not gonna take off on you. So you press that throttle down, it's just like if you had started pedaling and then that motor kind of slowly comes in and starts giving you power to actually propel the bike forward. So I think that's a pro. Generally, I think the throttle is a con. I wish. Um, it wasn't so easy to move and that it was easier to like keep in a position for a certain speed. Another con that I ran into on setup and this could have just been my bike is that this bike has disc brakes, which is great. And both of them rubbed when I assembled the bike. Again, I, I consider myself pretty handy. It was no issue for me to kind of get in there, tweak them a little bit so that they weren't rubbing. But I think for the standard individual who's buying a $1,300 bike, they would expect that those brakes wouldn't rub at all. So could again, just be my bike, but uh, they did rub and I did have to adjust them. Wasn't a huge deal, but I would have liked to see that not happen so that the vast majority of people that are buying this wouldn't have to deal with that. I wouldn't say this is a huge con, but definitely an area for improvement would be the battery life algorithm that they're using. If you slam the throttle down, <laughs> The, the battery life just kind of drops. And then if you let off the throttle, then it kind of like recovers and comes back up. I don't know the solution for this. It could be a little deceiving sometimes because if you're using a ton of the motor and then that battery level starts to drop, you might think, hey, I'm gonna be out of battery soon. But then as soon as you let off that throttle, it will kind of recover. So maybe a longer delay or something like that in the battery level algorithm would help improve that. But that was something, I mean, it wasn't a huge deal for me because I was never getting like super far away from my house. And again, I could always just pedal home if it ended up dying. But that happened consistently where as you're actively using the motor, the battery level appears lower than it actually is. Once you stop using it, it would recover and come back up. So I wish that that could be improved or maybe if even the algorithm could try to estimate like a range that you had left. I think that would be super helpful. Generally, I think this bike is pretty cool. I'm excited to have it. I'm very thankful that they decided to send it to me. If you're interested in the e-bike, definitely check this one out and compare it to other ones. I can say it's got a very strong motor. It's got a very good battery life. And generally, I think the bike looks pretty good. And I like that it has the rack on the back. The big tires are kind of cool. Definitely pump those tires up because I found when the tires were lower, it was not as comfortable of a ride and it was harder to handle. Once I pumped them up nice and firm, that thing, I mean, handled like a dream. So definitely check that if you get one. I hope you found this look at the Troxxas bike helpful if you're in the market for an e-bike. As always, thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. We are almost to 50,000 subscribers. So if you want some free merch, 
go over to my Instagram and you can get some free merch that way. Again, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.